on, give him a hand clap of praise. Isn't he wonderful? Hallelujah. So we would like to take a second just to welcome the vessels of the hand of the Lord International. We love you. We love you, new vessels, old vessels, all vessels. We love you. You are loved by the Lord and by Pastor Lady Shelley. And guess, is this your first time here? Raise your hand. Hey, I see they were, some of them was jumping in the praise. Like, hey, you jump on in that praise. So we do know that you're already welcome. I'm sure you already know you're welcome. And we love you and appreciate your presence. So in this time of giving, not only do we give glory, but we show the Lord that we love him through financial giving. And we don't want to limit it to the fruit of our lips. But we know the Lord is dealing with our heart and know that the movement of our money shows the movement of our heart towards him. So in this time of giving, you can raise your hand and the ushers can give you an envelope. If you're on Realm, our church database, you can give through Realm. You can text to give, all these different ways. But Father, know through our giving that we're not just offering the fruit of our lips, but we give you everything and we show you that we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless God for his grace and an opportunity to share with you on today. If you would meet me at 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 6. I want to take a look at verses 24 through 33. Again, welcome to everyone that is here, those that's on their way, those that are watching us live now. You're engaging. We bless God for his grace and his mercy, his love, his kindness. Second Kings chapter 6, we're going to start at verse 24. And so as we get reverence unto the word of God, I that you stand. If you're even at home, uh, get out of bed and stand while you making your coffee stand. Second Kings chapter 6 verse 24 down through 33. Just take your time. We're going to read together. We have a say amen. And if you don't have you can see it on the screen. Ready begin. And it came to pass after this that Benadad king of Syria gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria and behold, they besieged it until an ass head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver and the fourth part of the cap of a dose done for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel were passing up by, upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, If the lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? out of the barn floor, out of the wine press. And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son, that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So behold, the son, and did eat him. And I said unto her the next day, Give thy son, that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard words of the woman that he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall and the people looked and behold he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Then he said God do so and more also to me if the head of Elijah the son of Shaphat him this day. But Elijah sat in his house and the elders sat with him. And the king sent a man before him, but ere the messenger to him and said to the elders, See ye how this son of a murderer sent. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. And while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down to him. 
And he said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait the Lord any longer? May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again for your grace. We acknowledge your mercy, your love, your kindness. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us authority over the enemy. And we thank you that no weapon formed against your people shall be able to prosper. That in spite of every temptation, every trial, every situation, circumstance, the victory has already been won. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your complete faithfulness to the purpose and the assignment of your time here on earth. And because of that, we have victory in everything. So, Father God, we just thank you that we will walk boldly in the things in which we've been called to do. I thank you that you are exposing the intent and the purpose of the enemy. And I thank you, Lord God, that we won't back down, but go ahead first by your grace in boldness to fulfill that in which you have ordained. So I thank you now for victory in advance and the evidence thereof. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And if you're writing notes, I want you to write this down. You're taking notes. Write this down. I want a rematch. I want a rematch. As we look at uh, the text, and we've been uh, on this series of champions, and and we uh, dived into some things on last week and, and how the enemy will see you differently. We remember on last week that uh, they came, the army of the of Syria, you remember they gathered around Elijah to kill him. In their gathering, Elijah hit them with blindness by the Lord through prayer and end up taking them down to Samaria. But when they get down to Samaria, the king of Israel wanted to kill them, but instead Elijah tells them, don't kill them, treat them well and let them go. And it says that they did not attack Samaria or come down to Samaria for a while. But here's where we see something that's amazing. And I want you to look at verse 24 as it says, and it came to pass after this, which means some time went on. The first thing that I need you to recognize is that the Bible declares that when you resist the enemy, he will flee. But the Bible says he will flee for a season. Somebody say a season. Now, we talk about a season. We're not talking about every three months. The season, we talk about season, it is pointing to the fact that there are going to be some kind of time gap. But your season, my season may be different or the fleeing of the enemy may be different. He may come at you and you do what you're supposed to do or resist him. Today, the season may be he coming back on Tuesday. Or you may go through a trial and you, you endure that trial and that season may be uh, two months from now or six months from now or two years from now. But you have a way of seeing it again. Anybody ever been through something but you wonder why it came back? I'm explaining that to you today. Look at somebody say the enemy wants a rematch with you. Now, what I've come to recognize, for those of you who fight, who, who, fight, who uh, follow any kind of boxing or any kind of fighting, uh, MMA, all of that stuff, it's amazing that, that many times after a loss, the loser gets on in front of the microphone. The first thing that they say is, I want a rematch. The winner doesn't talk about rematches. It's the loser who wants the rematch. So what I need you to understand, and I'm going to break some things down with you, is that what you're seeing, many of you are seeing it. If you are not seeing it, you will see it. If you are resisting the enemy, if you feel like you should be tracking further, why is them seeing this trial again? That that why is this thing coming back to me? And when when even though I did what I was supposed to do, I I passed the trial, I said what I was supposed to say, I handled myself a certain way. Why am I seeing this again? It's because the enemy won't say rematch with you. So watch this. When we get to verse 24, it says, and it came to pass that Benadad, now, now I don't know if y'all remember, Benadad is the king of Syria. But when Elijah got the prophecy from God, 
he told him that Hazel would be the king over Syria. So we see that there's a king in place that God has already ordained for him to have his spot taken. And what I need you to see is just because the enemy attack you doesn't mean that God hasn't already promised that he won't win. But, but what is happening, there are some people who are going through some things, and for whatever reason, you, you have succumbed to the fact as if the enemy is really winning. How do you, Pastor, why would you say that? Because you're saying stuff like, why am I going through this? Why, why is this happening to me? Not from a perspective of understanding, but you're saying it from a perspective of as if life is not fair right now. And, and what you're doing, here's the problem. You are succumbing to the warfare that's attacking you, and you're not on the defensive, nor are you trying to fight back. You're just tired of seeing the enemy come at you. I can understand this piece because it, inside of myself, I believe that's, that's this part of us that should be that if you, even if you end up in a fight with someone and they end up winning, I've seen people say, you know what, let's call it a tie because the person who is losing won't stop. They get tired of fighting. They say, you know what? I'm tired of fighting you. I'm tired. Man, it's a tie. Let's just, let's just make it over with. They just tired. And, and, and you look at, you might be sitting beside somebody right now that, that, that they're saying in the spirit realm, okay, it's a tie. Ask, ask the person beside you, are you saying it's a tie? Are you tired? Look at somebody else and ask them, are you tired of fighting? Uh, yeah. I was tired. For those that are watching around the world, that's just a southern vernacular that we use in, in place of saying we are tired. We, I was tired. So look what happened. The king of Syria, he now comes and he wages war against Samaria. And this is where the king of Israel is. Watch this. Because of the war that they raged, one of the tactics of, of fighting is to surround the city and to prevent resources from going back and forth to inside the city as if to starve the people that's on the inside. So some of you right now, what is happening is that the part of the strategy of the enemy against you is that he's attacking your resources. But the problem is this. If you don't fight back, you're going to stay in the condition that you're in. See, at some point, watch this, you got to recognize that if you're trying to do something that nobody in your family has ever done and the enemy begins to attack your resources, you cannot come out just through planning. There are some things you're going to have to address in the spirit realm. So you have to you have to come against the spirit of poverty. You got to come against the things that are demonic that's keeping you from walking out what you're supposed to walk out. And here's what the world don't tell you. The world tell you if you just get to a certain dollar amount, you'll be straight. Well, let me ask you this question. Many of you may know this. What is considered, what, what amount per year is considered for a person to make that will propel them to be in the top 1% around the world? Somebody give me the answer to that. What, what do you think a person needs to make to make them be in the top 1% around the world? Give me some numbers. Huh? Half a million. Half a million. Right. In a year. Somebody say 500,000. Give me some ideas. Somebody say a million. 2.5. No, write this down. 32,000. I said 1% in the world. So if you make 32,000 or above, you are in the top 1% in the whole entire world. So, so if we look at it from that perspective, why are we still asking God to give us more? When he has probably made you 1%. In the top 1% in the whole entire world. In other words, there are people, there are 99% of the people who make less than $32,000 in the world. Ain't that some? So, so here's the thing. If you're making more than $32,000 and you're still struggling financially, it might stand the reason that it's more than just planning. It's more than just getting more money in your bank account. Could it be that what you're facing that you're really not dealing with? And let me tell you this. Getting a degree does not break poverty. If there's a spirit of poverty over your household, over your bloodline, getting a degree does not break the spirit of poverty. It's not that when you walk across the st stage, poverty is going to be broken off you. 
It doesn't work that way. What has to happen, there has to be some engaging in the spirit realm whereby what the enemy is doing against you, now you're confronting, watch this, and so now when you're confronting it, you're looking for no other levels to open up in your life. But here's the thing I need you to understand. When you defeat the enemy, he's going to come back and say, I want a rematch. Amen. Well, Pastor Shella, how, how many times I got to keep going through the same thing that I don't have to see it again? I have the slightest idea. Because what you got to consider is how long have people in my bloodline have been given over to this thing? So if, there, if the enemy can track where over the last 150 years he has been able to reign in your bloodline and here you come along saying you finna break this thing, you think he finna leave you alone after three, three years? You got to engage. The truth of the matter is you may spend the rest of your life fighting a rematch. And then the people who come after you don't have to see it like you, and they get to see another side of life. But you, watch this, even while they're being blessed, you're still fighting the rematch. Watch this. The first thing that the enemy did was come against their resources to the degree. It says that he besieged it, they besieged it, and then a, a, a ass head was sold for Four score pieces of silver. That is 80 pieces of silver. And, and, and here it's not talking about a person that you don't like. It's talking about a donkey. So the Bible's not giving us permission. Curse people. Be cussing. That's a donkey, right? Watch this. And they said, watch, even to this degree, they were selling dolls poop for five pieces of silver. They, they, so you, have you recognized And look, our country is saying the same thing. That when we are, it, we, when things are getting tight, what they say, inflation caused everything to go up. Well, inflation was going on in chapter 6, 2 Kings. Because things got scarce, they became more valuable. And watch this. It said that everybody was struggling. Watch this. Everybody was fi finding some kind of financial hardship. It says that the king of Israel was passing by the wall, and then this woman cries out. She says, help me, my Lord. And he says, pretty much, how can I help you if God don't even help you? Then she tells him of this story. Listen to this, moms. She tells him of a story. She said she had this other lady that was with her. Both had sons, but both were starving. And they came up with a plan to say, look, let's eat our sons. And she said, okay, that, okay well, I guess things have gotten so bad, we'll do it. She says, we, bought, we ate my son the first day. And then the next day when it's time to eat her son, she hid her son. And the king ripped his clothes and said, oh, my God, y'all eating kids? Are things so bad where y'all are eating kids? But here's the thing that I need you to understand. And, and it's amazing that out of all the time we get to this place that we're doing baby dedication. And here's the thing that, that none of us probably can wrap our mind around as we have the little babies lined up that somebody would be willing to eat them. Just to survive. Now, I, this, this, this took on a whole other meaning for me because I'd I be playing with them, and, and, and especially little chunky ones. i say, look, look at you. Yes, so we need to put that baby in a pot and eat them. And the baby be smiling. I don't have the slightest idea what I'm talking about. But it's just, it's just talk. But right here, they actually did it. Now, now, how many of you think that that's bad? Somebody balling kids and eating their children. Here's the thing. But here's the thing I need you to understand. Here's the thing. Your warfare can get so bad that you can begin to sacrifice your children. Pastor Shelly, no, I wouldn't do nothing like that. Here's the thing. Here's how sacrifice looks. Sacrifice looks like this. The moment you choose self over the best interest of them, that's a sacrifice. I'm finna, finna make it simple. Now, you might not bore them, and you might not talk back and forth somebody, but here's the thing that you got to ask yourself. And some of you are dealing with your parents actually sacrificing you. Yeah, you're still around, but, but there's a part of you that didn't get developed, a part of you that, that did not get shown love, a part of you that did not get affection, a part of you that didn't know what it's like to express yourself. All these things were being sacrificed around you. Why, why, watch this, because your parents were going through something. At a certain stage in your life, your parents were going through something. And so we can look at these ladies and say, how in the world can they even negotiate to, to watch this, to cook their children? But I, but I want to I bring something to your attention. If warfare hits you enough, you can choose yourself over them. Oh, boy. Y'all feel the intention of the it's tension in how why because we got to break some spirits here's the thing i need you to understand i came to fight you today because here's the thing the thing that's been holding you up the thing that has been keeping you from walking what you're supposed to be walking in i need you to understand this maybe you have been sacrificed and didn't know it with well, something as simple as your, your parents having to work two jobs but nobody's there to do your homework 
And so you don't make good grades. And even now you're intimidated by your by when you're around other people that you think are smarter than you. Where did that come from? It doesn't mean that you're not smart. But at certain critical parts of your life, nobody was there to walk you through things that somebody else had the opportunity to have somebody there in their life. Because watch this. Your parent was going through something so bad they sacrificed you and they did it unintentionally. They wanted a relationship, so they chose the man over you. And so the man that they brought in the house end up touching you and following you and doing all of this. Watch this. And even when you try to tell on them, they still stayed. What was happening? They were sacrificing you because they did not see themselves being able to get with anybody else. So guess what they did? They put all their stock into him or her at the expense of you. You were being sacrificed. They, they don't have time to go to your events, but they had time to go and pick him up. Sacrifice. And you, you're seeing this. You're hearing this. They don't have time to do homework with you, but they tell you to do your homework and they go in the room and close the door. They, they don't want to fix you nothing to eat, but, but you saw them fix him a big spread on his birthday. Sacrificing your child. You're telling them you're not as important to me. Sacrifice. Sacrifice can look in a whole lot of ways, but, but the single this thing down needs you to see this. The moment you choose yourself over them, sacrifice. And the enemy uses that as, as, a, as a tool to come in to slip in somebody's life. And now you wonder why people have insecurities, why they having issues with their dad, why they having issues with their mom, why they having issues with the people around them. Why? It's because here's the thing. You can't, you can't articulate it before the day, but here's what you need to start saying. Lord, I need you to deliver me because I recognize that they were sacrificing me at a certain age of my life. That's why nobody came to my PTA meeting. I was being sacrificed. That's why nobody set me down and told me about the birds and the bees. I was being sacrificed. That's, that's, why, that's why that person abused me and they told me don't say nothing because they groomed me and nobody was around to see me being groomed or didn't even care. I, I was listening to something this morning. This thing broke my heart. It said that, that, that a pedophile had did 12 years in prison and they interviewed him. And they interviewed him, asking him uh, pretty much about his strategy. And he, he, he did the interview, and he said there's a certain group of kids that he would target. He, says, he said if there was a strong father figure in the, in, in, in the family, he wouldn't mess with them. If, if, if they were uh, people who went to church all the time, he said he wouldn't mess with them. He said, but he looked for kids that were, watch this, that was vulnerable to him. Watch this. He said, if there was a parent, watch this. This is what he said. He said, if a, if a parent, if I came into the family's life and I would offer to babysit for them. Watch this. He said, if the, this is what he said. If the parent did not care, it was easy for me to get in. In other words, that, that could it be that because you're doing it by yourself and you get so overwhelmed that now if anybody come and say they'll help you out with a babysit. You are sacrificing your child because you're tired of doing it all by yourself. You say, I just need a minute. But here's the thing you got to understand. You got to be careful of how the enemy is fighting you because the moment you just need a minute may be the minute that somebody do something to your child and they spend the rest of their life trying to undo. Watch this. Because you sacrificed them because you were just overwhelmed in your warfare. He said he would target vulnerable situation. But notice what he said. He, he didn't say he, he targeted the mom that was overwhelmed. He said he targeted the mom that didn't care. So the enemy is helping you to understand that watch this. And, 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 and I get you and I'm with you. I, and, and just watching our granddaughter just this past weekend trying to get a baby to go to sleep. Baby don't want to go to sleep. You, you, you rocking. You doing all this stuff. Fed. You done changed them. And then the baby still don't want to go to sleep. And you know what you got to do the next day. You can let, You know what? You just finna cry. Here's the thing. What happens when you, when, but, but here's what we know. We know that she's going home. What happens when home is your home? And, and now you're saying, so-and-so dad ain't even here to help me. And it's all on you. And here's the thing. You're caught in the middle of your warfare. And it, it, it sounds good to choose yourself right now. And you can't even see the tactics of the enemy. 
What I'm trying to help you to understand that somebody in this room got to begin to start getting spiritually, uh, get spiritual discernment that you can begin to understand when the enemy is attacking you and you're under attack and you got to make decisions. Watch this. Not what's in your best interest, but what's in everything else's best interest so you can fight the enemy and keep him from destroying what God has ordained. Look at somebody tell me, you got to start fighting back. Because watch this, if the enemy want to rematch with you, and here's the thing, let me tell you this, a rematch may be a, 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 a something that the enemy comes and now he's hitting your generation, but he's, he, to him it's a rematch. Why? Your mama went through it. Your, your grandmama went through it. Your great-grandmama went through it. Your, your dad went through it. Your granddaddy went through it. Your great-granddaddy went through it. Now it gets to you, and all the enemy see is a rematch. But it may be your first time looking at it. They besieged the city, and the intent was to starve them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody, somebody is listening to me right now. Here's what you need. Here's your issue. How poverty came into your life is the fact that you've been starved. Maybe not financially, but emotionally. Maybe not financially, but psychologically. You don't even know how to express yourself anymore effectively. Here's the truth of the matter. Okay, let me get Pacific. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's somebody that's saying, Lord, I want to be in a relationship. But here's what God is saying to you. Here's the thing. Can you really handle one? Because you cannot get in a relationship with somebody. And now when it's time to talk, you don't even know how to articulate yourself. And so now you shut down because that's all you know. But you learned that defense mechanism in the middle of a warfare and you was being sacrificed. And now you bring that foolishness into somebody else's life. And now they, they know what it's like to express themselves in, without yelling and fussing and fighting. So you got some people right now, all they know is chaos. They will fight. They will go all out, blood going everywhere. They call the police. The police come and lock the person up. Watch this. Tim, before the day over, they run down there to go and get them out of jail. And that, the same person who called the police on them is the same person signing for the bail. You know how crazy that is? Now you out of bail money that y'all didn't even have at the beginning of the fight. You know how crazy that sound? We were going on some training yesterday. How crazy that sound? Listen to me, guys. Now, now take your feelings out of it. How crazy is it that me and somebody, we, me and a girlfriend get into it, and we're arguing over money. Get into a fight. She, Denise called the police on me. Now we got to pay extra money on what we didn't have before to get me out of jail because she called. And now... We say we love each other. You know who only that makes sense to? The two people that's in this toxic relationship. And you know what's crazy? To some people, that's normal. And then when they get somebody who don't act like that, you're boring. I'm boring because I ain't slapped you. I'm boring because we ain't drop kicked each other. I'm boring because we ain't cussed each other out and, and you just you just expressing yourself. No, you, you got some issues that you got to get resolved. Okay, let me help you understand this. Now, here's the thing. Ladies, lace fronts does not cure you from demonic activity. So, sir, lifting weights does not cure you from demonic activity. See, what we're doing is trying to fix all this external stuff, but ain't nobody dealing with what the real problem is. So now you trick me by walking past me and you look cute, but you got some issues that the moment you don't get your way, now you flat my ties and to you that's normal. <laughs> and all you say, I'm sorry. Yeah. What? Why you just didn't tell me you was upset? I ain't want you to go nowhere. Why you had to flat my ties? I'm sorry. You want me to get you some more? No, I want you to get out of my life, you <laughs> person. <laughs> Guys, I'm trying to help you to understand. That is not normal. I'm going to go to the store. I want to go. No, stay right here. I'll be right back. No, I want to go to the store with you. For what? Because the last person I went with, they said, we're going to the store. They ain't come back. So I mean, every time you go to the store, I think you're not going to come back. Like, what are you talking about? Have I ever proved to be that? No, you ain't. But just in case you try to leave me here. <laughs> so both of us got to run to the store because you haven't fixed a warfare that you've been having constant rematches in. Watch this. So the lady got tricked. Somebody say the lady got tricked. 
Can we go a little deeper? So what I need you to see, what, what I need you to see is this. What I need you to see is this. If, I, if you had to write something down, you have to write something down. I, I want you to write this piece. I want you to write this. I need to know exactly what this fight is about. I need to know exactly what this fight is about. Here's why we're losing. Here's why we're losing, Tim. We have, we, we, we're not looking at every individual fight. We're not looking at every individual fight. Now, now, if I am a boxer, everybody that I fight is a boxer, but everybody have different styles. I got to study your style in order to beat you. So in other words, every fight is different. Are you following me? Now, I need you to understand every fight you're fighting is different. If you try to treat everything the same, you're going to get whooped. Can we go a little deeper? Now, so, so we're not doing this today, but, but, but normally on Sunday, since we do kickball, we have approximately over 200 women that's out there at kickball. I'm going to use myself as an example. If the enemy wants to come at me through, through any other women, you got 200 women that's out there. If I said the enemy is using ladies in kickball to come at me, everybody, first mind may be adultery. How many would think about that if I said that? Your mind would go to adultery first. Okay, what your mind will go to? Trying to fight me. What your mind will go to? Somebody give me another one. Huh? The woman trying to be domineering. Good point. Give me another one. Huh? Scar my name. Boy, y'all doing good. Give me another one. Huh? Distract me from the ministry. Now, here's what I love. You guys are doing exactly what you need to do in every trial. If I'm in a setting of men, and we're in a men fellowship, and I say, look, man, these women out there on the field, they're coming at me. Most of the men are going to think, oh, they're trying to get you to cheat on your wife. That could be so, but that could not be all. One person, that may be their assignment. Somebody else could be the different things that each one of you said. That somebody else may be, well, I'm just going to try to strip you of, of, of your leadership. So, so watch this. When you're dealing with the spirit of Jezebel, let me explain it like this. When you're dealing with the spirit of Jezebel, Jezebel is a form of witchcraft, and it comes in a lot of different forms. That's why you got to understand, what am I really fighting? So somebody else intent. So if the enemy used them, Tim, it may be to get you to cheat on your wife. But if he used somebody else, they may just want to smear your name. Somebody else may tell everybody, don't go, don't go and play over there because they're trying to affect your bottom line. Are you following me? Somebody else may try to get you out of character that now that, that people may see you as this person. And so they're doing certain things. Why? To get you to blow up in front of everybody. Are you following me? So watch this. I cannot go in thinking that if the enemy is coming at me just through a woman, it's going to be for sexual immorality. It can come in a lot of different forms. But if I'm not ready for the fight, if all I'm looking for is somebody trying to tip me sexually, then I'm going to miss the fact that this person is manipulating me to get what they want. Because what do we see in the text? The lady said, let's, let's, let's ball our sons. But she had no intention on balling hers. She got what she wanted and then hid when it was time for her to pay up. That is what the spirit of manipulation do. It will get you to go all in, tell you that they're all in, but when it's time for them to be in, you find out they're not all in. So there's somebody, warfare, that's in this room right now. You got to deal with manipulation, which is a form of witchcraft. A person is get, feeding you stuff that make it look like it's a we thing, but it's a me thing. Ooh, see how that thing quiet, Tim? That means it's going on, it's going on. You might be sitting beside somebody that may really make you think we're in it together until it's time for them to move, push their weight. Now they're giving you excuses. But watch this. They got what they wanted from you. Now you need something from them. And watch this. It's a reason they can't produce. You need to understand the warfare. You felt victim to something that you should have been guarded from, but you didn't understand the tactics of the enemy. And so watch this. This woman is going crazy and she's rent her clothes. Why? Because she's been tricked to such a degree. Watch this. Been to her son is dead. And it was by her hands. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. The problem is this. If you cannot identify the warfare quick enough, you may kill something. And by the time you recognize it, 
it's over. Look at somebody say, you, you got to catch it before you kill it. See, see there's, there's finalities in certain stages. Watch this. You got to recognize what is the enemy after. There, there was a situation that was happening dealing with the kickball piece, and the Holy Spirit gave me, he said, you got to pray against the spirit of witchcraft. I said, look, here, here's the thing. I went into our staff meeting. I said, we, we, we're fighting the spirit of witchcraft, and here's the, what God is, is, is helping us understand. He's going to unveil the plans of the enemy. And so watch this. He started giving us things about the situation that needs whereby every time they would do something, we would be three steps ahead of them. And so we start laughing and say, look, it's amazing. They think church means stupid. See, what people got to do, they got to ask you your background first before they try to run game. So here's, what, here's, here's his thing. I'm, I'm going to help somebody. What they were trying to do is play on our emotions and our level of compassion to get what they wanted. So they came in with lies centered around, but how much do you care? And if you care enough, I can get you to do what I want you to do at the expense of everything. You're dealing with the spirit. Watch this. Let me help you understand something. The moment you cater to demons, you give them more authority in your life. The moment you cater to a demon, you give it more authority. So those of you who are saying, well, you know, I'm just not that confrontational. I just let things happen and let it fix itself. No, you're, you're losing. You're losing. I'm not asking you to be like me, but what I am asking you to do, you got to start fighting back in the spirit realm. You got to start coming against things. When you see stuff happening, and watch this, there are times you can have a conversation with a person, but there are times you got to have a conversation with the demon. Because here's the thing, you can be talking to a person, and here's the truth of the matter, they really don't see their wrong until it happens to them. And watch this. Don't try to give them back what they gave you. Then you're wrong. Watch this. Here's, here's the thing. Some of y'all are being tricked from this respect. The moment you give a person back the, the fruit from the seed they sown to you, now you're being petty. So people are hiding behind you just being petty. No, I'm giving you what you gave me. So when I give it back to you, why am I now being petty? But when you do it, it's justifiable. Am I making sense to you? Now, here's what I need you to understand. Uh, what I'm explaining to you that everybody in this room, no matter what your name is, no matter what you've been through, you are fighting a warfare. The problem is this. Many of you are actually losing what should be a rematch. You're giving way to, watch this, because you're tired of fighting the same thing. Let me stretch you more. Every warfare that comes at you is also aimed at your children. Why is it that these babies are on the verge of losing their life, but it's the parents that's going through financially? You, you want to know why? Write this down. Generational curses are real. Generational curses are real. In other words, here's what I need you to understand. There was a, there was a warfare attack uh, uh, come, that, that the enemy sent against your great granddaddy. How in the world your dad end up saying the same thing? Because the warfare was also attached to the child. Some of you got to recognize you're, you're born into a certain warfare. You're born into it. I don't like my family. You better get over that. You in it now? I just want a new family. Ain't no new family. You got, if you see something about your family you don't like, it's because you are the one called to fix it. Not run from it. Not shut everybody off. You got to do something about it. Well, my family, all of them are a bunch of liars. Well, tell the truth then. You prove that people can walk around and interact without lying. I don't want to talk to them. They just a bunch of liars. You, you, you got their ears, their nose, same shape head, but the lie just done skipped you. I don't know now. I don't, watch this. Then it turned into this. I don't lie as much as them. Right? And so what we're doing is we want credit for doing a, a little thing a little way but not understanding. No, I got to break this. Somebody, somebody say, I got to break this. Now, here's the thing. When you see something that, okay, let's rewind this. Let's rewind. How many, how many, how many can identify that there are things inside of your family that you do not like? It hurts you. You, you've seen that. Okay. Now, put your hands down. Don't lift your hands. How many recognize inside it? Do this. Do this. Do this. Make sure your hand don't come up. 
How many recognize that the thing that goes on hurts you so bad that you found yourself having issues with people who operate in that and now you have issues with them and not only do what they do irk you, they irk you. Don't lift your hand. Now, here's the thing. Anytime something bothers you, I need you to look at it from this perspective. Anytime something bothers you, it's not a key to run. It's a key to fix. If you're going to be a first fruit offering in your bloodline and God's going to break generational curses, if you see something that you don't like, that is a sign for you to be the one to fix it. So if you don't like it, automatically you should not allow it inside of your life. If you don't like it, why would you allow it inside of your household? So, so, so if, if these people get married and their marriage are horrible, it's, they do this to each other, they do that to each other. Watch this. When you get married, you, the first thing you need to say, look, we're not doing that. The women in my family try to run everything. All the men passive. All the women aggressive. All the women just not aggressive. They could be walking in the spirit of Jezebel. Because she's aggressive to him. She's not aggressive to every man. So it means she pick and choose which men to be aggressive to. So it means you're not aggressive. You're just aggressive at certain times. You know what sparks, that, sparks the spirit of Jezebel in a woman? When she meets a man that walks in the spirit of Ahab. The spirit of Ahab, then he feeds the spirit of Jezebel. Okay, somebody said, what, what do you mean? Uh, now, keep looking straight. Don't look to the side. How many of you have seen in your family where the woman makes all the decisions? I didn't say raise your hand. I didn't say, hey, you keep, we still don't keep your hand down. I forgot. Don't raise your hand on this one. Watch this. Watch this. I ain't, I'm not just talking about make decisions, but you can tell that when a serious decision needs to be made, the attention goes to mom. She runs the house. Dad sits back. Well, you, Dad, what you think? Well, you know how your mom is. It, it don't even matter what I say. She's just going to go ahead and do what she want to do anyway. Now, stop. Take a picture and say, Spirit Jezebel in operation. Because now, watch this. They will never reach their full potential because they are out of order. They out of order. Now, ladies, I'm not telling you you can't be assertive. I'm not telling you you can't be creative. I'm not telling you you can't make decisions. What I'm telling you is at certain moments, if you push your agenda over the plan of the head, you operate in witchcraft. Well, Pastor Shelley, you don't understand. He always made the wrong decision. Here's the thing. This just didn't start. So if you got with him and walked down the aisle with him, he was making wrong decisions then. Probably you. I'm going to go ahead and tell you because he's scared to tell you, but I, I'm not going on with you. So, so here's the thing. If he always making bad decisions, you mean to tell me when he got with you that was the right one? And the only time he made the right decision is when it benefits you? No, oh, that's the spirit in operation. So here, fellas, here's what I'm trying to help you to understand. They'll say, they call you what? Jellyback. Stop saying a man is a jellyback. Say he's a, he, he operating in the spirit of Ahab. Ahab. Care is the position, but don't make no decisions. He referred everything to, 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 to uh, Jezebel. Watch this. And fellas, here's the problem. Some of you operate in the spirit of Ahab, and you love it. Why? Because you know at the end of the day, she's going to come through for you. And so when it's time to make hard decisions, you refer to her. Not to get her wisdom on something. You refer to her. Why? Because you really want her to make the final de decision. Well, you know what I'm saying? I just don't want to mess up. That's called life. Yeah. If you don't want to mess up, seek God. Lord, give me your wisdom. Give me direction. Watch this. And so you can walk. See, some of you right now, y'all better start going to family reunion before you walk down the aisle with people. Yeah. If, if I would meet somebody new, Tim, I want to meet everybody. I'm going to go, hey, how you doing? I'm gonna, I'm, then I'm going to sit back in the corner. Pastor, what's wrong with you? Just observing. Just trying to see what I'm getting into. Right. <laughs> I'm here because she's cute. But I ain't finna get married because of that. I need to see what's going So Big Mama just yelled at him. He, he went and sat, sat down somewhere. Okay, let me see what her daughter do. Man, she just yelled at him and said, she's not bringing him 
him a plate. Who does she, he think she is? And they've been married 20, 40 years. Okay, note taken. And you mean to tell me you different? <laughs> nah. Babe, what you want, babe? You need anything else? I need you to sit down and explain. This is me. I, I can fix my own plate. Explain this. I just know the big mom over there, she running him. Her daughter run him. Your mama run your daddy. And you really think you finna run me, don't you? <laughs> no, I ain't like that. You know what I do? I step in front of everybody. I say, look, hear you, hear you. I got an announcement to make. Everybody, oh, he finna ask her to propose. No, I'm not proposing. I went there married to this family. <laughs> Big mama, you something else. You need to stop. And you let her do it. Go up. Come on, man up. You. I saw you it, for the last hour. She told you sit down. You ain't move yet. <laughs> Come on, Ahab. Get up. <laughs> I'll call him out. Because here's the thing I need you to understand. Here's the thing I need you to understand. Everybody in this room come with some type of warfare. We call it baggage. Yeah. Stop calling it baggage. No, it's warfare. That, watch this. And at certain times, certain things about you may not kick in until you hit certain levels. You know it's easy to act a certain way when there are certain commitments not made. I had somebody tell me one time, bitch, too. Well, Pastor, I mean, is it that bad if we just stay together, you know, because we want to see? See what? You can't, you can't act married and think you're going to get what the warfare that comes along with marriage. What's wrong with you? That don't work that way. There's a certain thing that's going to come at you when you hit certain levels. So we just, okay, I want to wake up seeing you every day. No, y'all playing. That's called playing house. Because at any given time, you can leave. But if I'm married to you, I can't walk out like that. So you're playing. Because watch this. At the end of the day, everybody's going to choose themselves. But when I'm married, I can't do that. So, 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 so the, the bad thing is we can look at a movie, and, and some of y'all, this is how I know y'all in fantasy land. Y'all look at a movie, and while the credit's running, y'all still talking about what's going to happen. The movie over. Y'all still talking about ghosts. Ghost dead. He going to come back because I just think, shut up. You're in fantasy land. The problem is what you got. You, you can't understand reality from real. And so what's going to happen in your relationship? What's going to happen with your family? You're going to treat it as we still playing. <laughs> no, this thing gets serious. You walk up and say, I do. Oh, it's on. It's on, it's on a whole nother level. There's a whole nother level of warfare that's going to hit you. Watch this. The enemy ain't going to hit you while y'all sinning. You're not trying to break that up. But if in your bloodline everybody go through a divorce, you're not going to find out if y'all compatible by living together, playing house. You find out when y'all say I do. Then every divorce demon wakes up and say what they just do. Yes. You don't see that demon playing house. Play, and I, I'm going to call them my bae. You People lying. You introduce this my husband. Y'all married. But you, I mean we've been together so long. That ain't your husband. You, you're a liar. I told you the whole family lies. You just keep <laughs> grown people. Look what happens. One lady lose her son because she did not understand the warfare she was in. You got people right now that are losing family members to the enemy because they don't understand the warfare they're in. Why is it that the husband and the wife are really arguing? Could it be that the enemy want your child that's in the other room to hear the conversation? And now, as a young man, he's developing an ideology about marriage. As a young girl, she's developing an ideology about marriage. Here's the truth of the matter. It may not even come out for another 30 years. And then when she gets married, when he gets married, they say, well, this is what I want in my relationship. I'm like, where, where that come from? Watch this. Watch this. I run out of time. Look at this. When the king heard it, he went into what? Sackcloth and ashes. So watch this. Here's the problem. Some of y'all think that the more you cry, the more you're fixing your situation. I'm not telling you you can't cry about it, but you got to start doing something about it. And watch this. He blamed Elijah. Why did he blame Elijah? Those that were here last week, that, that's what the answer said. Why is he blaming Elijah for what's happening? 
Because Elijah told him, don't kill him. Now, because he didn't kill him, he feel like had he killed them, they wouldn't be going through what they're going through right now. Here's what I'm I'm, I'm, I'm finna change for a minute. Some of you got to recognize part of the warfare that will come against what God has on your life. That At one season, you can tell somebody to do something, but when they start going through the warfare behind what you suggested, they, they will now hate you for what you said. Elijah wasn't wrong. It's the fact that now the king is facing a warfare through listening to Elijah. Here's something that you got to understand. I don't care who's in your life. A person can tell you what does says the Lord and they can be right on point. But every time you hit another level comes another devil. So just because I'm going through warfare doesn't mean you gave me bad counsel. And so now he wants to kill the prophet. Because the prophet suggests at another season don't kill him. So now he put a hit out on the prophet. Sent the man down there to kill him. He said, I'm going to take his head. Watch this. Here's something that you got to understand, too. Part of the warfare is that the enemy will say different things about you, but the one who's saying it won't be the one that come at you. And some people can't even recognize that. Some people get stirred up by somebody else and not understand it. If you don't like them so much, why don't you say something? I don't have time with all that food. But you're telling me. So, so now some of you will listen to somebody, they will get you stirred up and you feel a certain way about a person and they really don't have an issue with you and you don't have an issue with them. You done took on the offense of somebody else. I need you to write that down. I can't take on other people's offenses. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, you got to learn how to separate everything and everybody. In other words, just because people are closer to you doesn't make them right. You got to be careful that part of the warfare is for you to take on my offenses about what I'm going through. Watch this. And now you jump in to try to, rest, to, try to do something. And now you're, you're in the way of what God is trying to get done. See, sometimes what, what, look what happens. You're, I'm going to ride or die. To who? If they wrong, they wrong. Say, no, nah, I ain't doing Okay. See, right now, let me ask you a question. Right now, can your spouse come to you and tell you about something they're going through and you can look at it objectively? Or, do you, or are they automatically right because they're your wife? Or are they automatically right because they're your husband? Here's the thing. When you become a voice for God, you got to sit back and say, well, I hear what you're saying. But you, gotta, you know what? You, you did what? They said what to you? Well, babe, let's be honest. You do have a capacity to do this because you do it to me. So there's a strong possibility you did it to them. Well, I'm not talking about us. I'm talk, we talking about you, right? See, here's the thing. If you can't have those conversations, it's, it's a strong possibility that you are inside of a warfare and don't even know it. Can, we, can I have a different opinion than you? And I point out that. So if you come to me and ask me my opinion, I get to give you my opinion. You can't bring me something. Watch this. I know ain't nobody ever been through this. Have ever, anybody ever said something to you and they try to control your responses? They want to talk freely. But they don't want you to say, <laughs> you don't respond back. For, they say stuff like, I'm going to take, watch this, manipulation. Any time somebody comes to you, watch this, it's going to be so, somebody going gonna, to gonna laugh because you just went through this. If somebody comes to you and say, I want to tell you, but you can't get mad. And you say, okay. T don't agree to that. Tell them, number one, either you're going to tell them or you, you're not. You, don't, you can't control my response. That's manipulation. I want to tell you, but, but when I talk to you, you be coming back like this. So can't, no, you can't control my response. Why is it you get to let your heart out, but I got to control what I say back to you? That is a spirit. So if you think I'm going to get mad, evidently you did something you weren't supposed to do. Nobody ever said to me, Pastor Shell, I want to give you $1,000, but I don't want you to get mad. Right? You don't know why they're saying that? That's called manipulation. And some of you, 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 you agree to that because you don't understand the warfare that you're fighting. So immediately you say, no, nah, you can't control, no. Nah. Either you're going to tell me or, you, or you're not. You can't control my response to you. Well, you know, I just want, watch this. You got to be careful with this. Because along with this spirit of manipulation is the ability to cry on demand. Some of these people need to be in Hollywood. I ain't lying. 
if I can't get you, see, here's what I need you to understand. If I, see, what the enemy does in a person, here's the sad part. Many times a person don't even know they're being used by the enemy. They, 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 the enemy don't come at you straight. Many times when you're dealing with the spirit of manipulation, it comes, it has to come in a way that would be acceptable. So that means it, 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 it can hit, it can vary depending upon what stage of the warfare that you're in. So if I, if I talk to you like this and you don't give, they change and act like this. You don't give, they change and act like this. And they keep going. And many times, here's how you know you get to the end of their tactics. They break out in tears. How is it that we're supposed to be talking about what you did to me, but now i got to console you because you're crying? That's a demon. And you spend the next hour, it's going to be okay. I just, you know, I want you to know I'm here for you because I, I love you. This is, and they be, okay, I just, I just want to. Never talked about what they supposed to talk about. And here's the thing. I'm going to be honest with you. Since somebody been through that and there was a, there was a piece of you that felt empty, it's because you got played. So here's the thing. When you start coming against that, people would think that you're insensitive. It's not that I'm ins insensitive. I recognize when I'm dealing with a spirit. I'm not calling you the spirit, but I can tell when the spirit is operating through you. Amen. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So you, here's the thing. I don't want you to become paranoid, but I do want you to be mindful when the enemy is attacking you. And now he's trying to get you to respond a certain way and you lose the rematch. Some people perfect this stuff, guys. Uh, babies and, and, and children, they're great at it. Why? Because their mama great at it. Their, pa their grandparents great at it. Great grandparents. So through, through their bloodline, they just pass this thing on. Manipulation, manipulation, lying, stealing, cheat, all this stuff. And so when they get, the, they get to the baby, the baby great at it. Like, dang, how they do that? Baby, grab your face before they start asking you for something. What you grabbing my face for? What you doing? Child, like I don't even know. Some of them just told me to grab your face before I ask you for a cookie, and it'll work. It's warfare. No, you you ask, and so here's the thing: you got to see it, and you got to start addressing it. But watch this. So he sent the hitman out to Elijah, and Elijah is sitting with the elders. Watch this, guys. He's sitting with the elders, and he says, um, "Isn't it amazing how this man just tried to kill me?" He said, "There's a murderer at the door." Now, here's the thing: I need you to understand. I want you to be at a place that God can reveal to you what the enemy is really trying to do against you. We talked about this a little bit last week, but but here's the thing. It, it should not cause you to have anxiety. It should cause you to ha have peace. Be at a place where you understand the warfare, but you have peace that you're in the warfare because you know who's riding with you. So, so stop saying stuff like, they're just trying to get rid of me at the job. That's why I don't want to go. You're losing. You're supposed to want to go. Matter of fact, you should want to go to want to see are your prayers working. So how are they going to run you off? So now you're not being effective at the job because you're worrying about who don't like you. He already told you they don't like you. And start praying against that. Lord, I come against every demonic influence that's been sent on assignment to keep me from walking out what you have called me to walk out. You, this is not my job. This is my assignment. So I'm going to create warfare while I'm here because the enemy don't want me to be prosperous. And so every, every, no weapon form against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I condemn. Every conversation going on about my name to either the intent is to slander my name to somebody who I should be ministering to. So if the enemy can get to them first and get them not to like you through picking up their offense, now when you try to minister to them, they don't want to talk to you and don't even know why they're mad at you. See what the enemy is doing. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to come against. Uh, Lord, I pray that you will stop up his ears that he won't hear what the enemy is trying to sow. And I thank you that you will provide an opportunity for me to talk to him one-on-one -on -one so he can see I'm the person that they portray me to be. Guess what happened? Three days later, y'all in, in a break room. Everybody leave. Just so happened, y'all by yourself. Been around each other for three years. This is the first time y'all by yourself. Tell me that won't do something to your faith and say, man, this thing ain't working. He said, hey, man, hey, hey, Ben too, how you doing? I just, you know, God laid some stuff on my heart. Don't try to sound spooky, but here's what God, God revealed to me, that he really want me to be a blessing to you, but you'll listen to some people that's in your life that, that actually at this job that don't want God to do this. And so here's the thing. I'm not who they say I am. I'm not going to try to prove that I am, that I'm not that, but, but I promise you, if you open your heart, I promise you God can do something through this relationship. You know, she's going to start thinking, dang, how did he know that? 
So the Bible says death and life is in the power of what? Watch, watch this. The enemy's first attempt of assassination would not be with a knife. It would be talking against your grace. So you got to understand that the enemy would try. Watch this, guys. The enemy would try to assassinate your person through words before he can assassinate your body. But you don't understand the warfare. So when you don't understand the warfare, it bothers you that people are talking about you. Don't. Okay. Those that are saying what they're saying, let me ask you this. Do they pay your, your bills? So why are you worried about that? Everybody's not going to like you. Go ahead and tell the person beside you and say, look, everybody's not going to like you. I want you to get that out of your system. Here's the thing. Some people cannot like you. Watch this, guys. Some people, listen to me. Some people cannot like you as long as the demon is in them. They will never like you or love you until they get delivered. So get free from that. This is not about a, life is not about a popularity contest. How many people we can get to like us? Here's how I gauge it. How much do I really depend on you for my survival? If I don't, it don't matter what you think about me. It don't matter. You, I'm hurt. Here's the thing. You know what I recognize? There's a certain grace that's on my life, and when I'm around certain demons, it irritates them. It irritates them, and I can, I can see it. They start moving funny. I'm like, oh, okay. Shake their hand. Hey, how you doing? All right. Hey, like, boo, 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 whoa. <laughs> We got a one. We got a one. Hey, here's the thing. Some of y'all want to run from them people. I go in. I know you don't like me. I'm, hey. Hey. You okay? Yeah. It's hot out here, ain't it? I'm going to irritate you. Because here's the thing. You're helping me to see that my prayers work. Because I already prayed about this before you even did what you did. I ask God to reveal to me what is the enemy trying to do against me. And I get a chance to see it. And here, here's, the, here's how I have failed. I failed because I didn't understand the warfare. And I'm, I took it personally. And I thought in my mind, I didn't get a chance to do it. If I just lay hands on them, I can fix it. I said, all I want to do, I, I, I don't want to pray for him, and I want to lay hands on not, not, not in prayer. I just want to give him this, this three-piece real quick. I, and I don't want to do it over in the bushes. I want to do it in front of everybody. If I just do it in front of everybody, God said, okay, so what, what, what's that going to solve? I said, I don't know. But it'll, it'll, I think it'll feel better. If you just, Lord, just give me this one time. I remember saying, I said, if, if he say one more thing, And I said to a couple people, I'm telling you, I'm on a breaking point. He said one more thing, I'm going in. Holy Spirit said, and what you going to do? <laughs> what you mean? He said, what, you going to fight him? I'm just saying. Is, so is that part of you dead or not? I said, I mean, he shouldn't be doing this. He said, understand the warfare, son. What is the enemy trying to do right now is to, watch this, guys. Here's a part of warfare. He's trying to excite you. The excite, the, the excite piece is to get you to act out of character. Yep. What you mean act out of character? That part of you is supposed to be dead. You, when you wasn't saved, that's how you fix your problems. You can't get saved and try to fix your problems the same way you did when you wasn't saved. So some of you don't know that part of what the enemy is trying to do, just get you to yell back. Get you to engage with the foolishness. Watch this. And when you engage with the foolishness, he wins. That's why you feel like you, you feel why you're losing the rematch. You got to identify what is it that the enemy is really trying to get me to do right now. The reason he's coming against me. And I was talking to the same group of people. And one, I'm talking to one lady and another lady standing there. And she, all she's doing is watching my posture. I'm not even talking to her. And she says, just look how you're standing. She said, you, you just prideful because of how, how, I'm like, <laughs> in my, I got a part of me saying, check her. Another part of me, I guess it's the Decatur part. Anybody else from Decatur and you get, you get there? Okay. okay. So we got to pray against that Decatur demon or Atlanta demon. Something. 
It might be a Mississippi demon that had the same thing. It travels now. Spirits travel. And, and, and I heard a voice saying, check her. Now, then I had, heard another voice saying, but you know you're not like that no more. And the whole time this one person is talking to me, I'm battling with what this other person is saying, even though I'm not even looking at them. Here, here's how I got out of it. I said, Lord, I need you to help me. Lord, I need your wisdom. I'm praying. I need your wisdom. I need, Lord, Lord, speak through me. I need you to show me how to do this, this. I said, it doesn't make no sense. You got to be kidding me. All this is going on. I didn't even know. The Holy Spirit kept saying, say hey to them. Speak to them. Be nice. I'm like, why? Why do I keep on speaking? I already know they lying on me. I don't even want to talk to y'all. Because I'm good at that. I got the gift of goodbye. I can cut you off and don't think about you ever again in life. Here's the thing. And he kept pushing me to be nice. It wasn't. It, so a whole year went, went around. And we, we did this in Bible study. Whole year went around. And we're on. we going through Philippians uh, 4 and 8. And we get to a part that's, that, that Paul says. Think on the things that whatsoever things are lovely. When you look at lovely, it's talking about it's talking about extending yourself to everybody as if they're a friend. Even the people that don't like you. So it's not that you're faking. What you're doing is being lovely. In other words, I'm going to keep showing you love even though I think you don't deserve it. And here's what I had to do this week. I had to thank God for moving through me even though I didn't know the Bible was commanding me to act that way. I just knew he was telling me you cannot deal with this the way you used to. But I didn't know that now while he kept propelling me to do this thing, he was asking me to do, watch this, what the word said regardless of what my body wanted to do. So that's why you got to still be nice. That's why you got to still be loved. That's why you got to still smile. You got to extend yourself as, as if everybody is a dearing friend. Everybody. Everybody. As, as if, they are dear, dear, if they are dear friend. Why? Because God is doing something in you. You have to pass the test of your rematch. Well, Pastor Shelley, if I'm nice to people that don't like me and then I, I do this. So you mean tell me if I go to another job, I ain't going to see that again? You just might. Because there might be another demon over there in that department that you ain't dealt with yet. So, so here's the thing. I just want you to treat it like this. It's just a rematch. It's just a rematch. When you defeat the enemy, he will leave you for a season. But you got to answer it again. Then he suggests a rematch. I don't know about you. I'm, some stuff I'm just tired of seeing over and over again. Because you remember I told y'all about the soldiers, people stealing my soldiers at the house? You know what? Over the last two weeks, the uh, last two months, that haven't happened. Before you say awesome, Denise, here's why. I don't drink sodas no more. <laughs> You know what I found out? The spirit's still there. It just takes something else belonging to me. Wow. So I'm on water. These, these nice candy turned me on. What's the name of the water we fell in love with? Nite turned us on. Where you at, Nite? What's the name of the water? What, we get it from the farm market. Good. Natural. What, what's the name of I'm finna do a plug for them. What, what's the name of I know it's at the farm market. What's the name of Okay. So the water we get from the farmer market, here's the thing, it's, it, 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 they're in these blue containers. Now, if you see me drinking something at the park that's in a blue container this long, it's not, it's not, it's not liquor. So don't be looking over there saying, what well, pastor drink? Water. <laughs> here's the thing, it's in the nice blue, look like it's glass, but it's really plastic. It's nice, man, too. Water's smooth. I don't put some in the refrigerator. On the way home, I said, well, I got a good cold and waiting on me. <laughs> Who, who's picking up in the spirit what happened by the time I got? It was gone. Now, now here's the problem. Here's the problem because I thought I would deliver. You know you didn't put that in there. It took you two seconds. Somebody say two seconds. To grab another one and replace. I don't even mind you getting it. Just put one back. So I just want one cold by the time I get home. Guess what? I get home, it's gone. Then I say, who took my water? Here's the problem. No, here's the problem. No, they didn't say nobody. Here's the thing. They start laughing. 
I don't know where y'all think this funny. Have the enemy ever laughed when you dead serious? But because it ain't serious to them, they and then you find something start rising up on the inside of you. I'm talking, about, I'm, talking, I'm talking about the type of anger that started at the bottom of your feet. I ain't talking about that be here. I'm talking that thing, you, it crept up real, it, it be creeping up slow, and you got all the time in the world to think about what you finna say. That's, I'm talking about big mad. Pastor, it's just water. That's because you take people water and you don't put it back. So that's why you don't see it being a big thing. You one of the people that do it. Is, is it really that serious? It's mine. Yeah, that's serious. Especially if I done been vulnerable and say, look, please, y'all, don't touch my stuff. Did everybody understand what I just said? Yeah. What did I just say? Don't touch my stuff. Then you do it anyway. What are you telling me? You don't care. Here's the problem, guys. The reason it bothers me is because my whole life is sent around sacrificing for everybody. And the little thing I asked you to do is just respect. You can't even give me that. Watch this. I thought, Denise, I'd never have to face that again. I'm like, Lord, what's going on? He said, it's a rematch. I said, I'm tired of fighting this. He said, son, pass the test. I said, what's the test? He said, you got to understand what is it the enemy is trying to get you to do. And the moment, watch this, guys. The moment you respond the right way, depending upon what he's trying to get you to do, you pass the test. Thank you, Lord. So the thing you got to ask yourself, what is the right response I need to have right, right now? Do it to a degree that you're not even thinking about it. You don't even have to pray about it no more. It just come out of you. Why? Because it's, it's, so it's so far on the inside of you. But every test is not the same. Every warfare is not trying to get you to do the same thing. So don't generalize, generalize it. Put it in a small condensed. Say, oh, this is what they're even trying to do. No, you got to see what is it that you're fighting. Here's what I want your heart to be. I'm going to give you some homework for the next week. Here's your homework. Find out. The first place we need to find out, thank you, Holy Spirit, that I've been praying about. I need you to pray this too. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you where in your childhood you were sacrificed and those over you didn't know they was doing it. Listen to what I, listen to what I said. They didn't know they was doing it. Some of you are holding bitterness. Because you're, you, you, you feel the effects of the sacrifice. But I want to open your heart to this. What if, just what if, they really didn't know the damage they were doing to you? What if? What if, what if they were so consuming their own life, they didn't know it was, it was going to affect you like that? So part of what's keeping you, thank you, Holy Spirit, that's keeping you from releasing them is the fact that you have this mindset of this is, it deals with entitlement. They, they do know. If it hasn't been discussed, they, didn't, they don't know. And if you're talking about something that happened 25 years ago, it's a chance they did not know. So release that person. I need, I, thank you, Holy Spirit. So what I need you to do is to release those who did not do right by you while they was in their warfare. So there's some forgiveness that need to take place in here. There's some bitterness the Bible says the root of bitterness. Bitterness comes like a tree. It, it doesn't, it, it, it not just produce fruit, but it want to, it want to take root. You got to fix that. You got to fix that. Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's just something with this parent thing that, that God has put in place that none of us can shake. The Bible says we got to honor our mother and father. That our days may be long. He didn't say you had to like them. He said, but you have to honor. Amen. In other words, I, there's a certain level of reverence and respect you have to give to them. Why? He used them to bring you in. Yes. Pastor, they went dis I didn't ask you whether they were good or bad at what they did. Right. I'm, I'm trying to help you to get free because here's the thing. If you don't pass the test, there are certain things God cannot do with a person who is bitter toward their parents. So you're stopping the flow of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, I'm going to ask you this. If you had the way what you believe God is going to do in your life compared to what you're holding on to, I hope that the thing where, you, where you're trying to go outweigh your feelings right now. If, if you can do that with your scale, you can forgive. Forgive doesn't mean I agree with what you did to me. Forgiveness means I'm, I'm breaking bondage. I'm not going to be held back for what you did to me. 
I'm going I'm to I'm I'm still respect you. I'm going to love you. I personally had to go and visit my dad. And I wouldn't say that he did a great job with me. But I got a phone call that he, he was not doing good. Hey, he need to go to the doctor, this, this, and this. And I put it on my schedule to go. Here's the thing. I knew he's afraid of doctors, afraid of hospitals. He's afraid of needles. I knew there's a strong possibility he's not going to go. He has this crazy theory, ain't nothing wrong with you until you go to the doctor. And then when they tell you what's wrong with you, you're going to die in two weeks. So if a person who thinks like that, you think they're going to go? They ain't going to go. Guess what I did? I went anyway. You want to know why I went? He's still my dad. Do you see how it works? So watch this. I had to make sure I did what I was supposed to do in honoring him to know that there's something wrong with him and as a son to try to fix the problem even though I knew his stubbornness wouldn't allow it. See, some of you are, are, are banking on somebody else's response whether or not you're doing what's, supposed to be, what's right. No, you do what's right regardless of what the other person do because it's something God trying to get done through you. Are you following me? So I went with him, and we, we going back and forth for an hour. Every excuse he gave, I had, I had, another, I had another rebuttal. And he said, nah, I go when I, when I get my vacation time. And, and I said, well, if you said there's nothing wrong with you, why would you say you're going to go? I said, man, you can do this. His, his manager walked by. I involved the manager. I said, excuse me, sir, real quick question. If I got to take him to the hospital and he got to get something done, can his... Uh, 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 vacation time kick in from, for medical reasons? He said, sure. I said, what excuse you got now? He said, I ain't going. I said, okay. All right. You know what God going to look at? I did what I was supposed to do. Are you following me? So stop using what somebody else is not doing. Just do what you're supposed to do. And this should go on with everything that you're doing. Why? Because I'm holding you to a different standard because of who you say you believe in. The enemy cannot stop whatever God wants to do in your life. You are the only one who can stop it. And guess how, guess how you're doing it? By letting the enemy win the rematches. You got more power in you than you know. But you're going to have to choose differently. Huh. This is why I want to... I want to do this piece. Remember I asked y'all to pray for each other? I want, you, I want you to pray for somebody, but I need you to pray for your family right now. Grab somebody. Make, make sure they're a family member. If your family member is not here, if your family member is not here, I want you to stand, and I want you to touch and agree with somebody else whose family is not here. Grab that person. If you don't have a family member that's, that's not here, I want you to stand. And if you're standing, find somebody that's standing, and y'all come in agreement with them. If you're standing, find someone that's standing. We're going to pray for each other today. We're going to pray for each other today. Ask them what their name is. Go ahead and break the ice. Tell them they look nice today. You look so nice. You look so cute. Look, I like, tell them you like their shoes and the shirt that matched with the pants. And now that ice is broken. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Every person in this room represents some type of warfare. I don't care how cute you are. I don't care what you wore today. I don't care what you're driving on outside. I don't care where you live. There's a warfare that's connected to your bloodline. And if you're holding the hand of your family member, some of you may be more aware of what, what your bloodline is fighting than somebody else. And then somebody who you may be praying with somebody, you may not know what, what's going on in their bloodline. But you still can pray effectively that whatever God want to do in that person's life, pray that every generational curse is broken. Pray that God will anoint them to release every generational blessing that he has purpose and ordained. Here's where I need your heart to be right now. The Bible says one can chase a thousand to ten thousand through the power of agreement. Our level of effectiveness increased by ten. Then you praying by yourself. That's that's why I asked you to get with somebody. The person hand that you're holding, I want you to I want you to use every ounce of your faith to believe that whatever it is that God is doing in them, He will perfect it, and that the enemy will not win. And if you are aware of what the enemy is doing against your bloodline, I want you to pray over them. 
family members that you're holding. I want you to pray that that thing is broken and, and that other person is praying that it's broken. Whatever each one of you have been through, whatever you've seen, whatever you've seen, how the enemy has won, we're going to come against that. Don't worry about sounding perfect. Set your heart on reaching heaven and saying, God, I'm just talking to you right now on behalf of the hand that I'm holding. When I count to three, I want you to use every ounce of your faith to pray for that person right now. As, and know that as you're praying for them, somebody's praying for you. One, two, three, pray for them right now. Pray for them right now. God, we thank you. Lord, we give you glory. Father God, we give you honor. We give you praise. We pray that you would break every curse right now. I thank you, Father God, that you would expose the enemy, that every intent, every motivation is destroyed by the grace of God. I thank you, Lord God, that we come against every demonic seed right now that has been sown against their destiny, their purpose, the call of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God right now. Father God, we come against every demonic influence in the name of Jesus that have been given permission to stay in their bloodline, in their generation. We come against it now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we pray that by your grace, that, that you're using the men and women of God in this room right now. I don't care what age they are, God. You're using them to call those things that be not as though they are. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you would spark a foundation of prayer and intercession. As they begin to come against the things that the enemy has released over their life right now. And Father God, your word has declared that one can chase a thousand but two ten thousand. I thank you through the power of agreement that yokes are being destroyed and burdens are being removed by the power of God. And Lord, I come in agreement with every prayer being prayed under, under heaven right now. And I plead the blood of Jesus over every word that's being declared. May your glory be seen. May your power be made known in the name of Jesus. So God, we thank you for victory right now. We thank you for increase right now. We thank you, Lord God, that what the enemy has sought to do against your people shall not be able to prosper. I thank you that you expose the enemy. I thank you, Lord God, that your intentions and desires, Lord God, shall be be fulfilled the plans that you have for them plans to prosper lord god and to not harm shall come to pass and we thank you right now lord god that as your glory flow all over this place i lift up the children right now i thank you for those oh god that not that's not even aware of the blessing that's being released over them i thank you for the children lord god that's not even aware that curses are being destroyed that they won't have to see i thank you right now lord god that the power of the holy spirit shall change Hallelujah, and rearrange every intent of the enemy, Lord God. So, Father God, we come in agreement that it is so, that what you have purposed and ordained, it shall come to pass. And we thank you in advance for what you have purposed to do in this time and season. Break every yoke, Lord God, to remove every burden right now, and let your glory be seen all over this place. I thank you for every testimony, Lord God, that shall come out of that in which your people are doing and that they shall see you do, that you show forth yourself like never before. So we bless you, we honor you, and we count you faithful. Have your way, God. Do something so amazing that only you can do. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we declare it to be so right now. We declare it to be so right now. We declare it to be so right now. I want you to exercise your faith and I want you to give God a great big praise in advance for everything that he's about to do in and through the lives of his people. God, we thank you. Before you leave, I want you to squeeze somebody and tell them I'm going to be praying for you this week. I'm going to be praying for you this week. You're going to be in my prayers this week you're going to be in my prayers this week I'm going to be interceding for you I'm going to be interceding for you you're going to be in my prayers this week you're going to be in my prayers this week you're going to be in my prayers this week listen listen I want to, I want to spark this in somebody's heart I want somebody to be bold enough to start praying with their family. I don't care if y'all had to get on a conference call. I want you to pray 
over your family this week. I want y'all to pray together. I want y'all to pray together. Can we do that over the next seven days? Somebody organize that. Pray for your family. I want y'all to come together in agreement. Assign somebody to do that day. It can be real easy. You know what? It's your turn. And then let that person pray and everybody come in agreement for that. Because I, I just believe something is about to break. I don't know if you, you sense this. Something is about to break in some people's lives and over some bloodlines. I just, I just sense it. I sense it. I sense it. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What made prayer so amazing is, is that prayer is not a, a, a manipulation tool to get God to do what we want him to do. That's not what prayer is about. Prayer is an opportunity to simply fellowship and dialogue with God. All right? Now, as a result of that, guess what happens? I can cast my cares on him. And then he can show me what he intends to do in my life. And so it's through the fellowship that I end up seeing results. Not that I'm trying to manipulate God to do something. It's the fact that he helped me to see that he's here to do something. See the difference in that? I'm not trying to manipulate God into doing something, but he make himself known that he's here to do something. Now I, I put expectations on him and I watch him move. But he, 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 he allows me to get engaged and to be involved in the process. That's why your prayer was so important today. It's not that he doesn't intend on blessing the person you prayed for. He's just allowing you to be a part of the process, the engagement of it. So if you don't know them personally, I want you to have their name before you leave and that you're going to be praying for them this week over the next seven days. Just include them. I'm not asking you to spend an hour, two hours, but as you're praying in your personal time, Lord, I lift up this person that I prayed for in church on Sunday. And I pray that you will have your way in their life and in their bloodline, that you will bless them and multiply them, increase them, spiritual, relational, and financial. You can do something as simple as that, but I want you to do it every single day over the next seven days. Can we do that? Can we do that? I believe something going to happen. I believe something about to happen. I believe something's about to break. Mm. I believe something's about to break. I believe something's about to shift. God is up to something. I sense a turning. <laughs> it is. It's, it's Y'all might have seen. I, I keep seeing this, this real. I think I probably seen it yesterday, but it was. Uh, it, it was a little game they played that they took all these balloons and they put some water in it. And, and each person had was, was popping a different version of the balloon until the last person just knew that when they hit it, all the water would fall on them. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit realm that what, through this week, you're going to be popping. It. You're going to be popping something until you hit that last thing and it's going to be like a flood that's going to happen in your life. My God, I thank him for his grace. Man. High five somebody and say, you better get ready. You better get ready. Something about to happen in your life. Something about to happen. You were wondering, what, why, what's been the hold up? Maybe you haven't been praying the right thing. Something's about to happen in your life. Something about to happen in your life. Here's, here's what I want to give you the opportunity to do as we get ready to move forward and, and, and dedicating these babies before we get ready to do that. If you're in this room and God has spoken to you that the hand of the Lord is a place that he will have for you to be. We want to give you this opportunity to come and plant yourself here at the hand of the Lord. You can come up. We can uh, acknowledge you to everybody. And if you're online. Uh, you can do the same. Just type in that I'm, I want to plant myself, and we will acknowledge you over uh, looking at the, the over the microphone and, and looking at the um, monitors. We can do that piece. Amen. Amen. Any hearts? Any hearts? Any hearts? Any hearts? Amen. 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 Well, we bless God for His grace and everything that He has set in motion to do in here. So we want to turn it over now to I think hospitality is responsible for this piece. Good afternoon. I want to welcome everyone to our baby, baby dedication service. As I call the baby's name, parents and guests, please come forward and we're going to start assembling on my right and your left. 
The first baby's name is Mackenzie Smar. The meaning of Mackenzie's name means child of the wise leader, witness. The next name is Brooke Swint. Brooke means water or stream, inspiring a free-flowing and adaptable nature, encouraging her to go wherever the river takes her. Finally, we have Alora Morales. And Alora means the Lord is my light. So, baby dedication is a symbolic ceremony undertaken by Christian parents soon after the birth of a child. The ceremony is intended to be a public declaration by the parents that they will raise their child in the Christian faith. Proverbs 22.6 tells us to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The biblical foundation of, of dedicating a child to the Lord can be found in the book of 1 Samuel 1 and 11. Jesus himself was also dedicated to God. Luke 2, 21 begins the account of Mary and Joseph taking him to the temple to dedicate him to the Lord. Baby dedication is no way considered to be baptism. Making the decision to be baptized is outside the scope of a baby's understanding. Romans 10.10 10 tells us that for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This verse points to the fact that the confessor must, be, must make a verbal declaration of his or her own decision to be baptized. Consequently, the decision to be baptized must be uh, the child must be at a, a must reach the age of consent to understand the word and choose to obey to obey the word or not. So this is the part of our ceremony where we distribute the salt and oil. Salt suggests an agreement of enduring qualities. Besides the enduring and preserving factor, salt also has a purifying effect on whatever it comes in contact with. Ezekiel 16.4 records that newborn babies were rubbed with salt. And oil, of course, is a widely understood symbol of the Holy Spirit. The oil of anointing stands as a physical representation of Jesus being given the Holy Spirit to fulfill his purpose according to Luke 4 and 18. Thank you. Um, was so weighty on my heart uh, with as we do this is the fact that this generation of babies are under an attack totally different than anything we've ever seen. Having now my kids being grown and now my grandkids coming into the world, I'm really feeling more and more pressure and sorry sorrow for them that they're actually gonna be raised around, more than just what you are able to show them. 
that when they go to school that people going to say stuff is normal, that's demonic. And now you're, the way that you're going to have to rear them is totally different than what I had to do 25 years ago because they're not facing the same thing. And no matter what you share at home, that you, when they go outside, it's going to be bombarded for all this perversion. And, and girls, we have all girls that's here. They are passing laws that men can go into a bathroom with girls. That it's okay because somebody say I identify as this. You're still a male. We didn't have to worry about stuff like that. But, but I'm telling you that this is the warfare that they're facing. So thank you for acknowledging the fact that, you know what, even though they are not at the age of consent, as parents, as family members, you're saying that we're acknowledging, God, we need you in this child's life. We cannot do this by ourselves. So as we are dedicating these babies, those of you who are in attendance, I want you to just start praying for this family. Pray for these, these pretty, wonderful, precious daughters. Pray for their, their households. Just start interceding for them right now. But that the enemy not just desire to take them, but any child that's coming into the earth, we declaring that they are not going to have our babies in Jesus' name. Parents, moms, or Ever, I want you to point, uh, put your hand, dip your hand in the, in the salt and water and give it to them. I don't know what their response is going to be. I've done this for years. Some babies like it. Some babies don't. Can't tell you if they do or don't. But just what that represents is, is that God was used. And we're acknowledging, Lord, that you're going to use them to change the culture, change environments, change uh, whatever warfare that is against them, that, that, that they're going to speak against that even at a young age. And make it intentional. So parents, as you grab, as you, I want the parents to lay hands on the children. And I want the family members to gather around them until everybody's touching. Everybody's touching. Everybody's touching. Everybody's touching. Everybody's touching. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Everybody's touching. We come in agreement over this baby right now. Thank you, Lord. The Heavenly Father, we bless you and we thank you for these sweet angels that you've given us. And Lord God, we dedicate them back to you right now. We know that they're not at the age of a consent to receive, to accept you for themselves. But as guardians, we acknowledge in Lord God that they cannot do it without you. And your word declares a three-four cord is not easily broken. So we declare that your glory shall be seen in their life. We thank you that you will use them and there will be a hedge of protection around about them. We understand that we are in a culture that's trying to steal our children. But I thank you right now, even as we declare today, Lord God, that we will not make decisions, Lord God, that will sacrifice our children, even though we're unaware. But I ask that you will give the parents wisdom, knowledge and understand divine wisdom knowledge and understanding even the family members and friends i thank you lord god that you would give them insight as well and we dedicate them and their lives back to you that the promise that you have ordained before before time and when they was in eternity in your bosom it is that that we come in agreement that it is so right now so we ask that you will bless them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet and that anyone who sows in their life shall sow on good ground we declare it to be so in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we have, uh, before you leave, we have certificates for each child. And it has the baby's name on it. And it says, this certificate is presented on this 30th day of April, 2023, at the hand of the Lord International Church in Decatur, Georgia. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that's First Peter 2 and 9, and signed by Pastor Shelley. Is that order? Which one? Mackenzie Smar. Alora Morales. Brooks went. Him by the pictures. And after church, uh, after this ceremony, you can stand by for pictures if you want pictures to be taken. As soon as we're done, if you could, each family come, we're going to get, get pictures of you before we do our line, okay? So we want to build some form of memory. And thank you guys for entrusting us with dedicating these precious babies. Amen. She is pumped and excited. Where are you going?
So we want to turn it over to thank, uh, AP Thomas. Are you, you going to go with mommy? You can tell her bye-bye. Alicia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Today was a wonderful service. Amen. We thank God for the word that was sown. These beautiful babies that were dedicated. And while you're here, before we depart, I just want to briefly go over some announcements. Amen. As the month is coming to a close, we want you guys to look forward to the things that we have in store for May. But first and foremost, we just want to thank everyone that came out to support our baby dedication, all of our guests, our visitors. You always have a place to come worship here at the Hand of the Lord International. And so we invite you back at any one of our service. We start at 930. Praise and worship starts at 930. But we go live in our um, broadcast on social media, YouTube and Facebook. Covenant Promises starts at 10 o'clock. So we do hope that you will come back and fellowship with us in the near future. Also... If you didn't get the opportunity to give, we have five different ways for you to express, amen, your worship unto the Lord. And if you have not had the opportunity to give, we want to give you that opportunity at this time to sow your seeds, amen. You can go via Cash App. We have um, a Realm app. We can do, um, what other ways? We can give via um, tithe envelopes if you need an envelope, old-fashioned way. Just raise your hand. Usher will get one to you at this time. Awesome. And I can't see. Y'all pray for my eyes. That says Young Adults Ministry. And so the Young Adults Ministry, if you are in between the ages of 18 and 26, our young adults are um, gathering together and we're going to kick off our Young Adults Ministry. Um, and we want you to be a part. We don't want to leave you out. So if you are between the ages of 18 and 26, we invite you to um, meet and greet our leaders downstairs. They'll be downstairs briefly on 100 Hall. You can go down there directly after service and just, you know, say hello, um, introduce yourselves, and we hope to see you participating in our young adults ministry. Awesome. So Wednesday, we have a special treat for all of our Bible scholars. If you uh, want to become a Bible scholar, if you just want to sharpen your, um, your edge, your faith, we want to invite you to our Bible studies that we're hosting on um, Wednesdays. It's called Unapologetically Speaking. And this Bible study is going to be focusing on apologetics, defending your faith. So we want you guys to come out and um, fellowship with us every Wednesday in May. Service starts at 6.30, praise and worship. And we go live um, at 7 o'clock. So we hope to see you there. Also... PTO, PTO Shoe Drive. We are partnering, amen, with KIPP um, Kip, Kip Atlanta Co Collegiate. Um, and they are um, they're accepting donations for either new, gently worn um, shoes. The goal is 2,500 shoes that we're collecting. So we want you guys to be a part of this so that we can help them raise their goal. If you have any old shoes that you're not currently wearing, y'all know, ladies, we have some stuff in our closets that we can get rid of, correct? Awesome. How about donating that to a good cause? So after service, um, starting next Sunday, we're going to have a donation box in our foyer. And you can bring those shoes and you can drop them off there. And I saw that red back there. Listen. Listen. Now, this Saturday, if you have not registered, if you have not put on your calendar to come and fellowship with the Heart of a Blessing Women's Ministry, I'm just going to let you know if you miss this, if you miss this, you're missing a treat. 
I want to invite all the women, all the ladies that are in here today, come out and fellowship with us on Saturday. Our Thank Tank is going to start at 10 o'clock. Amen. Thank Tank is going to be an explosive time of praise and worship and just um, fellowship amongst women. So I encourage you, if you have not registered, I want to see you there. Okay. Place. Listen, our place training is on the rise. If you are concerned about um, contributing to the house, if you have, if you know you have a grace, a gift, God has um, sown something into your life, and you know what? God expects in a return. He, re he expects in a, a return. Anything that God has deposited into you, he expects a return on that deposit. And so God has given us graces. He's placed gifts on it inside of us that he expects us to utilize for his glory and, and the benefit of others. So place is designed to help you come into an understanding of how how God uniquely designed you with your um with your gifts. So I want you guys to sign up if you haven't done so already. That is going to be on May the 12th and the 13th, Friday and Saturday. Um, our very own Kalia Brown is going to be hosting it. She's a fantastic, awesome, awesome sp um, teacher. And I want to encourage you guys just to register and come and um, learn more about how God uniquely designed you. And this is the last day, you guys, to sign up for our um, chosen family outing. And what, what better day, you know, to close out in family worship? We want our families to join um, the chosen ministry and fellowship. So we have created a event. Not we, we didn't create it. You know, the baseball team created it. We just want you guys to come um, and fellowship with us. So we're going to a baseball game. And so if you have not registered, the cost is $25 per person, ages three and up. So we want you guys to come out and fellowship with us. So go sign up today. And all games have been canceled today, you guys. So we will pick back up next week for Zenith. Oh, I, I feel so bad about that. I wanted to play today, guys. I wanted to go beat somebody up, but can't do it. It's all good. Come on and stand to your feet and grab you a neighbor. You're going to speak into their lives according to 3 John, the second verse. And it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper. Be in health even as your soul prospers in Jesus' name. Amen.